a very exciting and interesting day for Victoria 3 fans today as Paradox Interactive announced Victoria 3's new immersion pack, a paid DLC called Voice of the People that's releasing alongside the free patch update, patch 1.3. In this video, we'll discuss both of those things. We'll start by going through this trailer, highlighting and pausing at some new features, and then looking at the developer's diary for all the juicy detail. First up, we hear about political agitators. They're adding 60 plus new historical characters, as well as new ways to interact with characters, such as exiling a dissident. More detail on that to come later in the video. I also thought I'd pause for a minute here and just give us 10 seconds or so to reflect on their new agitators UI, surrounded by a completely new political UI for movements and interest groups up the top on that bar there. Moving along with the trailer, we see a little bit about the French Presidential Republic before seeing some of the new graphics displayed on the map. We heard a little bit about those in a recent developer diary too. You can see them play out in terms of devastation or revolt revolution, speaking of which France is the kingdom in this case. And I thought this frame starting the game was particularly interesting, not just because we see the new map wallpaper and detail nor because it's the Kingdom of France, but also because the game's starting in 1846. I wouldn't read too much into any of those things other than to focus on the beautiful new map and the fact that France is the focus of this DLC. And as you can see, and of course, that's accompanied by new historical immersion, new events, decisions, and journal entries as you explore the map. Unique ideologies as well, of course, unique to France, but perhaps spreading across the world. And indeed, I expect at least some of the latter ones to do so. There is that new map wallpaper, as well as a new French UI theme accompanied not just in the game's menus, but also down the bottom UI and all sorts of other places. And finally, rounding out the visual overhauls for France, it's French buildings, adding to the historical immersion that we'll discuss very shortly. And that's it for the Voice of the People trailer, coming May 22nd. Now let's move through and actually see about these new gameplay features. Let's start with this DLC itself, Voice of the People. They say it's named after its headlining feature, Agitators, a new kind of character that will rally populations in support of political movements that align with their own ideology. Political movements and ideologies, revolutions, of course, something we've talked about over the last few weeks as being something that they're going to change in the free patch, patch 1.3. Anyway, I digress. Agitators, they say, will shake up internal politics, acting independently, so separately from interest groups, amplifying power from below. Agitators serve as an opposite function to interest group petitions which reflect the demands of the political elite, so it's more of a grassroots movement. Uh, depending on how your goals align with theirs, they could be a pain or a really valuable ally. And we see a graphic showing a, a list of exiled agitators because you can exile them. And that's the accompanying new gameplay feature that goes along with them. Not only that though, but you can go shopping. Let's take a look. Are you sick and tired of that one agrarian party leader with inexplicably high popularity stealing votes from your cherished liberals? Is there a radical agitator spreading dangerous ideas in your bastion of political reaction? Well, I've got a solution for you, exile. And that's a, a rather comical introduction to the new feature that will allow you to exile these radical political people inside of your society. Inconvenient characters can be exiled from a nation and driv driven into political exile up for grabs for whatever nation wants to harbour your unpatriotic dissidents. On the other side of things, if you feel like your nation needs a shake-up, maybe that Danish anarchist exile would do the job, you can pursue a list of available exiles and invite them to your country as an agitator. So this tool will work both ways. Not only will you be able to exile agitators that perhaps don't align with the politics that you're trying to push, but you can also go shopping on a, on a list of available exiles. Hot available exiles! in an area near you can be shopped from. So you could pick and choose one that maybe is trying to push a style of politics that more closely aligns with your nation and your goals, more importantly. 
As we'll learn in the next section of the Developer Diaries, these kinds of expansions for Victoria 3 are focused around visuals and content and kind of adding extra, you guessed it, immersion or flavour to the game. And in this case, Voice of the People's content and visual focus is themed around France, one of the greatest powers in the era and one of the most, in the writer's humble opinion, in need of a healthy dose of content. In an upcoming developer's diary, which we'll cover right here on the channel, a shameless plug to subscribe, we've got not only exciting Victoria 3 things on the horizon, but more to share from Paradox coming to your screens very soon. Anyway, I digress. In a future dev diary, they're going to go into more detail about what they have planned for France, but right now they want to share that they'll be tackling weighty topics like the Paris Commune, dynastic struggles for the throne, Bonaparte's, etc, etc. We'll also be going through and covering France's quest for territorial expansion within Europe and beyond. This will be, of course, accompanied by journal entries and events. Playing as France should offer a much more immersive experience. Uh, immersive, perhaps, akin to that, of course, of, of playing of England, of Queen Victoria herself. And I like this. These flavour packs, they come in, they dump a whole load of interest, a whole load of new events and flavour on One Nation. It's just a shame it's only one. Am I being greedy? <laughs> I probably am. But as we move through now, we'll talk a little bit more about the nature of this kind of DLC and how it fits in with future ones. Just quickly before we do though, they also highlighted, as we saw in the trailer, that it's not just a voice of the people adding, say, a French UI skin or uh, just maybe a couple of details around the edge of France, but no, an entire France-themed Paper map of the world, featuring a personal favourite art style in the game of the writer, the Pacific Bread Centaur. <laughs> On the character art side, they've added new historical agitators, of course those new characters now taking on that new role, uh, who will have their own unique appearance, including outfits and props, and if that weren't enough, there's even more to come in a developer diary on visual features in a few more weeks' time, giving us some inkling around what we can expect over the next few weeks now as we lead up to the release. And with my destructive current French gameplay in the background, let's now move on to talking about the actual DLC pack itself and future ones. Of course, we're talking about the Immersion Pack and what it entails for Victoria 3 and how they've decided on which parts will be included in the one point free update, the free update for all players, and which parts will be exclusive to this paid, of course, Immersion Pack, although you may not necessarily have to pay for it depending on which version of Victoria 3 you owned. Everything that we've previously discussed here on the channel in previous dev diaries like the Revolution Clock, the new law enactment, three-part system, the new laws, all of that stuff from the previous diaries is part of the free update. So it'll roll out to all players. They're reworks of existing systems, they say, and additions to them. Exactly the kinds of changes the Paradox veterans might expect in a free update. Bang on there. They now go on to talk about the Immersion Pack itself, the paid DLC. Immersion Packs are envisioned as content-driven and art-heavy, with mechanical features that support content and make the world come to life. As the title implies, Immersion Packs are about immersion. You can expect them to contain plenty of narrative events, journal entries, major visual updates, and light but impactful mechanical features and systemic reworks, the kinds of things that we've talked about today, for example, with the agitators. They go on to say that immersion packs will be themed around one country or region of the world, and this is where the bulk of narrative content and art will be focused and take its inspiration from. I can't help but think here that perhaps this one could act as a stencil for future ones, where we either see a major power like France or a region of the world where there are a cluster of nations that are perhaps less significant in the game's overall narrative. We get the new wallpaper for them, we get their new characters added, perhaps a new feature around the side of military or character development. Either way, uh, let me carry on with the quote. Uh, These new mechanical features and systemic reworks will be mostly contained in a free update that will be released alongside the Immersion Pack. Everyone gets the feature, but the Immersion Pack owners will get all of the bells and whistles. In the case of this Immersion Pack, Voice of the People, Agitators will be a free feature, while certain interactions, such as exiling characters, will be included in the Immersion Pack. Just to 
pause on that one there for a minute. What we're hearing is that most of the features that have been discussed, or all of them that have been discussed up until this point, will be included for free. However, not everything that we saw in that trailer will be free. In fact, most of it won't be. The bells and the whistles that they're talking about, I'm assuming, are referring to those more graphical features, right? The new map, the wallpaper. But the agitators, those new characters that can stir up a political movement, will be a free feature. While certain interactions with them, such as exiling those pesky agitators out, will only be included in the immersion pack. That's an interesting distinction. I'm not sure how one is a gameplay mechanic and another isn't. Feels less bells and whistles and more looks like you're stuck with the one you got. (laughs) Either way, I'll be interested to iron out the detail and hear a little bit more about that split. Maybe that seems like a normal split and my reaction is unusual. Let me know below. Now, onto a quick team update from Victoria 3, the Paradox, the team behind it, and also then a note around release. When will all of this juicy new stuff get into our grubby little hands? Since Victoria 3's release, the team has transitioned from a project aimed at delivering one thing, Victoria 3 version 1.0, to a team split across multiple updates simultaneously. Uh, rather interestingly, they've divided themselves into three sub-teams with different focuses, fields, and sizes. The Mechanists team was responsible for the 1.2 update, an update defined by its systems design and code-heavy tasks. Voice of the People and the free patch accompanying it, patch 1.3, is primarily the work of the Academics and Artisans team, which focus on narrative design, scripted content, and art, respectively. And I think, just personally here, this gives us a little bit of insight as to what to expect moving forward. We see a a sort of a systems design code heavy update, and then more of an academic artisan update to follow, and perhaps one more in between, although it looks like the academics and the artisans teamed up, and that's actually their three teams tied together. Uh, The teams tie into their major post-release goals that they've talked about before, 1.3 and Voice of the People, focused on internal politics, historical immersion, uh, where they've briefly updated some lines uh, perfectly with the expertise of the academics and artisans. While the academics and artisans work on 1.3, the Mechanist team is cooking up the next update, perhaps 1.4, which will be systems-focused. It'll include long-awaited, they say, free updates to other post-release pillars. Very interesting to see what will come next. Uh, They say that they are far from ready to start talking about it for now, but rest assured there's exciting stuff along the way. And that's all for this week's Dev Diary, but there will be more to come. Next week, they'll be diving into the mechanical features, those agitators and exiles, which I'm keen to hear more about, where that division will be placed between the free and the paid update, but also because it is the main new feature, beautiful aesthetics aside. So stick around next week. I'll be sure to cover that. Next week's going to be a very busy one, Uh, as well as next week they'll be unveiling a new super moddable way to interact with characters, new separate from the agitators and exiles. So I'm looking forward to that. Voice of the People itself will release on May 22nd, around a month from the time of recording this video, alongside the free update to Victoria 3 patch 1.3. Pre-orders available now with limited time bonus content also included in the Grand Edition. So this is part of the Grand Edition release. So if you own that, then you'll get this all for free. Otherwise, there will be a paid immersion pack releasing alongside the free update. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'll see you all next time.